Good afternoon. Um, it is 1.31, now 1.32, I apologize, we're a couple minutes late. Um, we will call the Zoning Board of Adjustments meeting now in session at 1.32. Everyone please turn off your cell phones while the meeting is in session. Uh, staff, if you'll read the opening statement, please. The Zoning Board of Adjustment for the City of El Paso, Texas is now in session for Monday, April 15th, 2024. This board is established under Article 211.008 of the Texas Local Government Code, Chapter 2.16 of the El Paso Municipal Code. In appropriate cases and subject to the appropriate conditions and safeguards, this board is empowered to make special exceptions or grant variances to the terms of the zoning ordinance that are consistent with the general purpose and intent of the ordinance and in accordance with any applicable rules contained within the ordinance. Your application will be decided only after you have had the opportunity to present evidence before the board for its consideration. Other parties interested in the case may also be heard at this time. No consultation among board members has been held in advance regarding your case. This board does not act in an arbitrary manner. You may feel that this application of the zoning ordinance or smart code to your situation will result in a hardship to you, but this does not mean that the board has the power to grant you relief unless the facts of your case are such that the board must act on them. You may be sure that full consideration will be given to your case and following this hearing, you will be promptly notified of the board's decision. Thank you. Um, and let, now we'll go ahead and have the board members and staff introduce themselves, starting at my right. Audrey, you first. All right. Um, Audrey, yes. Good afternoon, Alexis Alvarez. Janet Fortune. Martha Aguayo. Linda Troncoso. Ray Adalto. Lewis Edwards. Jorge Leon. And staff. Nina Rodriguez, Planning and Inspections. Mirna Aguilar, Planning and Inspections. Juan Naranjo, Planning and Inspections. Thank you. Daniel. Daniel Chavira, Planning and Inspections. Good afternoon, Kevin Smith with Planning and Inspections. Andrew Salom with Planning and Inspections. And Jesus Quintanilla with the City Attorney's Office. Thank you all. And Audrey, we'd like to welcome you, this being your first meeting. Um, with this, um, for will anybody giving testimony today Please stand up and raise your right hand. So anybody that's to be having a case heard today, please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Um, staff, are there any changes to the agenda? Good afternoon, uh, Andrew Sloan with my inspection. There is a couple changes. Uh, the first one, PZBA 24006 at, at 4566 Weeping Willow is requested to be deleted. And item number six, PZBA 242008, uh, that one is, uh, there's a staff report, uh, revision of the staff report, and that one's located at 12, 357, Limpia. And that's a revised staff report, and you'll have it in your packets. Thank you so much. Um, with that, board members, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended with the staff changes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Staff, that being said, um, let's present the first case. I believe that's PZ, item number two, PZBA 24007. Good afternoon again. Andrew Salome with Planning Inspections. 
Item number two on the agenda is special exception for property that's located at 4804 Yandel. They're requesting a special exception K. It's uh, 15 year, more years in existence, and that's to legalize an existing additional structure that encroaches in the rear and side yard setbacks in an R4 residential zone district. Here's an aerial view of the subject property, and that is highlighted in yellow. And the property is south of Montana and east of Reynolds Drive. The zoning district for the property again is R4 residential. The site plan does depict the layout of the existing property and the encroachment uh, in the rear and side yards and that is shown in red. The structure um, which extends 1.6 inches in the required setback of 10 feet and And that's 35.85 uh, square, square feet of the additional structure. Also, the structure extends three feet, six inches into the required five feet side setback. And that is 160.15 square feet of the additional structure. Here we see um, from Yandel Street, the subject property. Here you have the side view of the existing structure of the 1.6, uh, one foot six inches that encroaches into the 10 feet, and that is highlighted in red. Also you see the three feet, six inches that encroaches into the five feet side setback, and that is in red. This is a 2009 aerial imagery uh, the structure has been in existence again for 15 years and the rear and side yard setback encroachments. The owner has uh, had this property since 2013 and evidence has been submitted that the owner did not construct this structure. Notifications were mailed out to property owners within 300 feet on April 5th of 2024, we have not received any support or opposition for this request, but we did receive four phone calls of inquiry. Staff does recommend approval of special exception K uh, as a request on the rear and side yard encroachments as it's been in existence for more than 15 years. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Board members, uh, do you, does the board have any questions for staff? I do. Um, would you make a correction on the on the paperwork that we received? You have two things. None, one is a, it's an R4 residential, and I just want to make sure it's in compliance with an R3 below where it says summary request. So would you please correct that to R4? on the summary. That way we don't have to hear this again. Yeah, it should be R4. Thank you. Yeah. That was Any other questions? Okay, no. d is there a representative for the applicant here today? Good afternoon, city staff and board members. I'm Walter Lujan with Dow Cohen Builders. I'm representing the owners, uh, Carmen and Jose Rodriguez. Thank you, Walter. Does, an, does any of the board have questions for Walter? Okay, with that, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve based upon the recommendations. At Janet Fortune, second. Thank you. All, thank you, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you, motion passes. Next, we have item number PZBA 2400018.
Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Juan Naranjo with planning and inspections. Item number three on the agenda. Yeah. I'm sorry, but we can't hear you over here with the noise. So if we could have, uh, if we could have the uh, speakers Hello? turned up Hello? a little bit. There we go. Okay. So. Again, good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. This is Juan Naranjo with planning and inspections. Item number two of the agenda is a request for a special section B for the property located at 8433 Hartford Drive. The applicant is seeking special section B to legalize the encroachment of an existing carport into the required five foot side yard setback in R3 residential zone district. Here is an aerial view of the property highlighted in yellow. The property is located north of Cesar Chavez Memorial Highway and east of Yarbor Drive. The zoning district for the property is R3 residential. Here is the site plan with the layout of the existing property. The applicant is requesting a special section to allow to legalize an existing carport which extends 4.5 feet into the required five foot side yard setback for a total encroachment of 174 square feet. Here we can see a front view of the property along Hartford Drive, sorry. Here is another view of the existing carport with the encroachment of 4.5 shown in red. This is another view of the carport from the rear patio. Aerial photographs indicate that there are two other properties in the same block and with the block directly across and above in the street that also contain structures located in the side yard that encroach into their respective side yard setbacks located at 84, 30, 38, Hartford Drive and 8452 Villanova Drive. This is an aerial view of the property located at 8438 Hartford Drive. And this is an aerial view of the property located at 8452 Villanova Drive. Both property has half a structure that are encroaching into the required five feet side setback. Notice were mailed to property owner within 300 feet on April 5th, 2024. The planning division has not received any communication in support or opposition to the request. Staff recommends approval with condition of the special section request as the requested encroachments are less than encroachment into the setback already present at at least two other neighboring property. The condition are as follows, that the, exos, that the accessory structure located at the rear shall be removed from the five, five foot utility easement area, and that gutters and down, down spots shall be placed on the side structure to retain water within the property. Thank you, this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Um, board members, do you have any questions for staff? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, is the applicant present or a representative present regarding this case? The, the owner confirmed that he's going to be in person or through the city, through the Zoom link. I don't know if he is in. So Star six to unmute yourself if we have a representative present online. If not, is there anyone else present to represent this case? Okay, with that, um, are there any, is there anyone else here to speak in favor or against this case? Okay, with that, I will entertain a motion. And Janet Fortune, I make a motion to approve with the conditions put forth. By staff. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Aye. Please note that Mr. Adato opposed the thing. The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Um, and then I must admit that I made a mistake and I rushed to action on the previous item. Uh, I missed the call to the public, so although we had a motion to approve, I didn't ask if anyone was here to speak for or against that case. So going back to case number PZBA 24-0007, um, is there anyone online? Ma Ma Madam Chair, I think real quick, can we have a motion to reconsider item two, please? Oh, motion perfect. made. Second. All in favor of, to reconsider? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now Good we catch. Can take <laughs> okay, so we're reconsidering the second item um, because I failed to call for a motion to, uh, for uh, public comment. And so with that, I'd like to open up the floor or online to anyone regarding the case uh, at 4804 East Yandell Street. Would anyone like to speak in favor or against that case? Star 610, mute yourself if you're online. Okay, if there's no one here to speak on behalf of the case, I will consider another motion regarding that case. Same motion Thank to you. approve based upon the recommendations of staff. Thank you. Janet Fortune, I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for your patience. Um, with that, we will move to item number four, which is PZBA 2400021. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board, Nina Rodriguez with Planning and Inspections. Item four on the agenda is a request for special exception J for a carport over a driveway for the property located at 10224 Suez Drive. The subject property is located south of Montana Avenue and east of Wedgwood Drive. The applicant is requesting a special exception to, to permit the construction of a proposed carport that would encroach into the front yard setback. The zoning district for the property is R3 residential. And here we have a site plan depicting the existing layout of the property with the proposed carport in the front yard setback. The applicant is requesting special exception J to permit the encroachment of the proposed carport into the 21.92 front yard setback. If approved, it would permit a 374.66 square foot encroachment into the front yard setback and modify the existing front yard setback from 21.92 feet to seven and a half feet. And here we have some elevations of the proposed carport provided by the applicant from the front and side perspectives. Here we have an image of the subject property along Suez Drive facing south. And here we have a visual image of the proposed carport from the front perspective uh, with the encroachment highlighted in red. And here we have another image of the proposed carport from the side pers perspectives. Notices were mailed to property owners within 300 feet on April 5th, 2024. At this point, the planning division has not received any communication in support nor in opposition to this request. And with that, staff recommends approval of the special exception request with the condition, and the condition being that the roof line between the existing storage structure and the rear yard be located at least five feet from the roof line of the main home. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, board members, do you have any questions for staff? I do. Do you have any other pictures of the neighborhood? Has anybody else got a carport like that? 
So this is under special exception J, not B. So this special exception isn't contingent on other properties. Do you have any pictures of it anywhere else? Of other in spite carports of, that. In, of other carports in the neighborhood? No. Yes. Okay. Is there any? There are in the neighborhood. I happened to see some as I was driving down to the property. I don't remember if they're on that specific block, but they are on Suez Drive. I did notice them, yes. Okay. What is the existing structure in the rear yard? So, let's see. There's a couple of structures. We do have a couple of sheds. So we have one on the top right corner. Uh, the one we're concerned with is the one right behind the house on the left corner. Um, most of it is five feet from the roof line, um, but there's a little lip on the bottom left corner of the storage structure in the rear. It's hard to see um, from the site plan, um, but we just wanted to ensure that from eve to eve between both structures that it is five feet. Do you know if it is a portable structure or? A no, it's a permanent structure. It's a storage shed. Uh, Daniel Chavira with, with a building. I do want to add that that uh, structure was legalized in 2019. So it is uh, permitted. It is contingent on that being adjusted, right? It's just to ensure, yes, that the from eve to eve between the structure and the home, that it is at least five feet. So just so I am understanding that even though it has been approved, we are asking for it to be adjusted. Yeah. So I'm... So, so I think we're not sure that it's actually five feet eve to eve, and Daniel's saying that it was already legalized. So does that mean we're think, sure it's five feet? I don't feet? think we're talking about the same thing. I think you're talking about the carport having to be five feet away from the roof no. line, right? No. No. no, 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 no. We're talking about the top left building that's uh -huh. a storage shed. It's already legalized. Right. But, and they're, but they, they're having it in here as... As a requirement to separate the eaves five feet. I'm confused. Yeah, so much. <laughs> so it, it is going to be adjust, need to be adjusted for this? It might already be f uh, between five feet. I did speak with the architect, and um, she thought that there was like a little bit that might not be, and she just wanted to be sure. So I told her, well, we can take this case today, but we're going to put a condition just to ensure that it is five feet. OK. so. If we approve okay. this, that when it's, if it's not five feet, then they will adjust it to have this. Approval. Yes. Okay. It's just to ensure that it is five feet okay. between Eve to Eve. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Do we have a representative of the applicant here today? Yes, good afternoon, I'm the owner. Sir, may, could you give us your name, please? My name is Cesar E. Apodaca. Thank you, Mr. Apodaca. Does anyone have any questions for him? Are you aware that there might be a question about that back storage? Uh, I was notified just recently, but uh, we had some inspectors from the city look at it when, when 2019, I believe, and it was everything okay then. So I'm not sure, but if there's anything I need to to change, I will gladly do it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Any other questions for the applicant? No, ma'am. Do we have anyone in the audience or online uh, here to speak in favor of or against this case? Star six to unmute yourself. Any public comment? Okay, hearing none, I will take a motion for action. Janet Fortune, I make a motion to approve uh, with the conditions listed. Thank you. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. We have one opposition. Um, the motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we have item number PZBA 24-00023. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone, uh, chair and members of the board, Mirna Aguilar with Planning and Inspections. Item number five on the agenda is a request for special exception B, a request to legalize an existing structure that encroaches into the rear yard setback for the property located at 2219 McGoffin. This is an aerial view of the subject property. This image shows the property being in a C4 commercial zone and the existing and surrounding zoning for the property. This image portrays the site plan of how the property is right now, showing the encroachment of the 10 feet in red. The applicant is proposing to legalize an existing structure that extends 10 feet into the rear yard setback, leaving it to zero yard setback in this district. If approved, it will permit an encroachment of 375 square feet. This image shows the, the front of the subject property in its existing condition. This picture shows the encroachment on the rear as it is uh, right now. This also shows the 10 feet encroachment that it is existing. Here is an aerial view of all the properties in this block that have the same encroachment all the way to the rear or a little bit less, but encroaching. For the properties to qualify, there needs to be two or more properties that have the same encroachment. These are an example of two that have a similar encroachment all the way to the rear. These properties um, are located at 2200 Bassett Avenue and it has a legal non-conforming and the 2201 McGoffin Avenue. This one is non-conforming as it stands right now. The properties have been constructed like this since about 1935 to 1950, which is before our zoning. Notices well, ma well mer mailed, I'm sorry, to property owners within 300 feet of April 5th, 2024. We have received one inquiry in opposition to this request. Staff does recommend approval of the exception request uh, to legalize the existing structure encroaching in the rear yard setback, the property located at 2219 McGoffin Avenue. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Board members, do we have any questions for staff? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, do we have a representative of the applicant here? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Ricardo Bocarro. I'm the owner of the property. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Does anyone have any questions for the owner? No, ma'am. Okay. Is there anyone present in the audience or online to here to speak in favor of or against this property? If you all will please come to the podium one at a time and introduce yourselves. Uh, good afternoon, board. Um, my name is Manny Verdusco. I'm a partial owner of this property, along with my brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. My name is Angelina Granados, and I am a sister. Good afternoon. My name is Fred Verdusco, and I'm also brother's sister. 
So uh, our concerns uh, is, uh, again, this is a, a dwelling that now, my understanding, has more than six residents living there. I don't know how many occupants are in this property, right? And then, and then in difference out of the other properties, this property is joint. There's no firewall between the current structure that we have and this building that we have. And, and since they started building and adding more residencies, uh, the wall that's next, that's adjoined to this residence, we had already issues where it's falling down or, or nothing. Our other concern is the safety and egress, especially for fire and the number of tenants when you're trying to evacuate from this structure, right? Not only that, but fire or potential hazards to the, our structure in our building because, like I mentioned, there's no firewall. The other thing is uh, the load on infrastructure, electrical, sewage, and, and, and water. Because again, you now have more residents, more subdivisions of, of, of using these utilities and no structure. I'm not sure uh, the planning here did uh, any wall stress testing to make sure that the wall doesn't fall. Again, the structures are, I can tell you when my brother, my father and I uh, uh, did some remodeling, they're made out of adobe, right? Uh, so it's very old structures and, and again, uh, we wanna make sure, and, and again, as an engineer and evaluating these properties, I, I think we continue building and adding more capacity to the tenants next door without really taking into consideration safety and hazards to both properties. Um, just to add to it, uh, back in 2020, we did major repairs and this was with the previous owner. And uh, with the previous owner, we had actually a lot of leakage because of the structure, the way it was uh, subdivided. Um, I, from what I hear, there was no inspections or nothing like that done, so nothing was overseen. And right now, um, from what I know, well, we are, and just to clarify, we're next door, adjacent to it, it's 2217 McGoffin. So okay. we're adjacent to it, okay? Just to clarify that. And then um, the parking, I know that we were talking um, to you earlier right now, but uh, the parking is a major, major issue. The person that resides there is my mom. She's 84 years old. She goes to dialysis three times a week. My sister picks her up and there's really, sometimes like today when she dropped her off, uh, yeah. there was, well, dropped her off and picked her up, there was nowhere to park. So she has to park in the middle of the street just for her to be able to, uh, to drop her off or pick her up at times. Um, and this has just completely overwhelmed the, the parking spaces, right? But again, going back to uh, what you're trying to recap and rezoning, um, we disagree for it. Uh, we want it for it to be done, whatever, whatever has to go through, but uh, we just would like some, uh, somebody to look more into this because it is uh, being detrimental to, to, my, to my mom's uh, housing next door. And just to add a little bit um, more, um, I don't know if you saw on the pictures all the trash cans that are outside. Um, we ourselves put our trash inside other bags and then wrap them, throw them in the bigger trash cans. Um, his tenants don't do that, they just dump. So there's always bad smell, trash on the sidewalk. Right now it looks really clean on your picture, but that's not the real view. Um, I've had to knock on doors for somebody to, I, I, one example was last week. Somebody was there, I got there, they were parked with half of the car out where they have to fit in the front of, the, of, the, of, the, of their door. Um, there was somebody, one of his tenants from the back was in the front and I said, is this your car? He says, no, and he ran inside. So I started knocking on doors. His first apartment is empty now because the girl just moved out. But I knocked on the second one which she already took her um, doorbell off. I knocked and her son came out and goes, oh, I'm moving it, I'm moving it. Because I've, ha I've had multiple since last year, early last year, and I have copies of all the texts that I have sent him where I have had issues with his tenants, with the cars. All I asked is one parking space so I can pick up my mom and take her to dialysis. She uses a curb to be able to get into my car. Otherwise, I have to get a stool, put it in the middle of the street, get her onto the stool, get on there, she uses a walker, she has a wheelchair, she just turned 84, 10 years on dialysis, so she can barely walk. Sometimes I have to really strain myself to be able to lift her into the car. Um, also, I have not investigated, but I will. It looks like 
um, they're getting cable from my cable. So I will investigate that. I'll bring my son to see if they have connected their cable to my cable. It looks like that. Uh, like I said, it's not uh, a for sure thing, but I will uh, bring my son to get up on the roof and look at it. And, um, and when they're doing their work, you can hear the roof. They get on our roof to get onto theirs, and it's banging, or the walls are banging because there's no space. Their wall is our wall. So any banging that they do, they do damage to her closets, which are the ones that are right there. And um, I, I have had verbal incidents with his tenants as well. So because of the parking. Thank you. I have a question Sure. for staff, first of all. Can you tell us what C4 allows? C4 does allow the apartments and, and the encroachments uh, to four units. Now, the reason they're doing this legalization of the structure, that's because they are, they brought build plan, like builder's plans to bring it to four apartments. So they're trying to make it right, but before this is legalized, they'll not get a permit to do anything on it. And that's the reason they're here. They're bringing it down to four, which we told them they had to, and that's what they're about to do, but they need. Now, unfortunately, and I had explained to them, you know, this is for the legalization of the property as it stands right now, where we don't have to the outside of what happens. Like parking, there's no assigned parking. Um, anywhere in the city. That went away in 1917, somewhere around there. So there's no assigned parking to say, oh, this is my parking only, um, not even on residences. Um, if they're not inside their driveway, whatever's in the, in the outside, anybody can park there. I have a question. Okay. Um, are you saying that as of right now, it's more than four apartments? There is six now, so they're trying to. Not anymore. Well. And this is Andrew Saloon. I would like to add a comment here. So the ZBA, um, it's the special exemption for just the encroachment area, and they will take care of how many units, the parking, the fire rated walls. That'll be taken care of during the per the building permit stage. Uh, and if I may add to that, Daniel Chavira with planning and inspections. A building permit was submitted in November of last year. It's still under review. It was taken out for corrections in January. That has not been approved. And looking at the comments, uh, we are asking for, for fire rated assemblies. And uh, parking will also be a item that needs to be complied with, either by providing on-site parking or applying through through a s separate uh, means, applying for for uh, a parking reduction. So they do not have a permit to occupy this building as of now, and uh, the permits that were submitted was for four units. So I want to make make clarification and, and get this clear. Earlier, you said that there was no parking requirement but now you're you're saying there is or there will be yeah no so so what we said earlier as, as, a, as a group was that right away parking is not assigned parking and that would be street parking right yeah okay right so that's not assigned on-site parking that is considered is there room parking. for on-site parking uh, yeah. it's something that we have not looked at or I have not looked at but it's not a unusual case. There's quite a bit of cases that we see where there is no room for on-site parking. In that area, are there other apartments? I, I believe there are. And in particular, your, your property, to the folks that were up, it is a single residence? Yes, sir. It's a single residence. Single residence, not an apartment. Okay. Okay. Appreciate the clarification. And I'm going to repeat what Andrew mentioned, which is what Mr. Salu mentioned, which is uh, right now, we're just looking at the yes, setback sir. encroachment, and, and, the, and that's what we're looking to, to approve. Everything else will be looked at and taken care of under the building permit. Thank you. 
So is it fair to say by approving this, it allows the space in the future to fix the, the problems of the firewalls and possible other solutions? This is just the first step right. Right. for it to happen, right. to fix uh, the other problems. Right, yeah. and it's gonna be through the building permit. C can you put the photo of the rear alley on the screen? Just to make sure, you have a common wall between two edifices. Is that the way it was originally sold as well? That's how sold and purchased. Since early Do you have any ideas how long or how Most old of these properties were built between 1935 and 1950. So it's been, it's been in existing like this since a long time. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of or against this property? I'm, I'm sorry, we, could, could we have to have them step up could, or else we don't you? know who they are. Yeah. Please, for the record. Um, I also a neighbor from there, but also work just by, at a parking. Ma'am, okay, could you give us your name, please? Anita Garcia. Okay, thank you, Ms. Garcia. Please time. proceed with your. Okay. Yeah, I just worry about parking because every time when we go there, we sometimes we cannot find parking, and I, they were saying they were be six. You know, how can they park his car when we have a problem parking ourselves when we go there? But they, they, they said they're going to do spot four, but I feel like there maybe two, because I don't know where, or maybe they can park somewhere else. I was concerned that they was going to stand in the back, but they said not going to stand it. It's going to be the size. Ms. Garcia, where do you live? Uh, or where um, are you at? I live like um, the What's third the one. Okay, there's the, the picture. I live, I think I'm not neighbor from her. No, I'm um, your next neighbor. What's your address? No, no, I think I'm, I'm okay. I know my neighbor has a lady who goes to analysis. Oh. You say you go to analysis. Yeah. What's your address, ma'am? Huh? What's your address? It's, um, I think that's number 12. I think it's this name, that 12. Um, is that one the bakery? Are you 22? The bakery lot. The bakery? Right. So she, she's two lots away. Yeah, she's so I'm, I'm here two lots with her, and then she's there, I'm, I'm next to it. Two away. Two, two away. away. Yes. So it's the, this property, and then the family with the mother in dialysis, and then yeah, okay. Ms. Garcia. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like right to say that we are home from. We, went, we were coming also, we have that's why you, that's too much for six, but can we sometimes, oh, now we don't have the, um, no, said, um, uh, the, um, the apartments, we also have people parking there too. But that's only concern, but they already talk about space. I hope that you fix that part of the space. That one is in the back, but in the front, there's, there are less. Thank you. So okay. I'm going to try to recap this of what I've All heard right. from everybody. Um, the, what we're here for today is to legalize the fact that this building that's been around what for, it sounds like from 1935 to 1950, extends and encroaches in what probably didn't exist as a rear setback at the time. It goes all the way to the rear property line, so it's encroaching mm -hmm. in the 10-foot setback. Mm -hmm. The property owner has come to us to submit building plans so that he can revise this, remodel this property to accommodate four apartment units. 
he's going through the legal building permitting process and in order to do that so that permitting can check off all the boxes and make sure everything's legal, we're asking for approval to encroach in the rear 10 feet as the building has for many years. If that is approved today, then he's allowed to move forward with his building plans, at which point he will have to do whatever reviews are necessary to make it conform to the current building permit requirements, which includes firewalls and proper plumbing and everything else. So today, this board does not have the authority to take any action with regard to parking. Mm -hmm. What we're here today is co to consider whether or not the fact that this building that's been sitting towards the back property line for many, many years is okay to stay encroaching in the rear 10 feet, which it appears that many other properties on this block are. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything? No, I think you did a great job. And, and I just want to assure the, the, the people that are here, both Mr. Porticato and, and the families that are uh, concerned, that if we don't um, take the recommendation of the city, then you don't have another avenue to try to get your um, problems resolved because it has to go into the planning and permit department next. I have a question. Sure. I think you just, I think you just said uh, for him to build four apartments, is this an additional four than what he already has in the, in the no, back? No, ma'am. No, ma okay. He's remodeling the current building okay. into four units. So if he had six before and there are six mailboxes, the plans that he submitted to the, to the building permit are to change that building to only four units. Okay. And when they do those rem that remodeling, it will address firewalls, it will bring plumbing up to code, it will do all of those other things as well. Also. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, you said they will be enhancing the, the infrastructure. Would we be receiving a copy of what enhancements are going to be? You just mentioned infrastructure. Uh, is the plumbing, the electrical, the sewage, is that going to be uh, provided to us to, like I said, this property that uh, we're sharing the same wall, and the other ones didn't have the same wall. It, it's, what, it's what's your last name again, sir? Uh, my name is uh, Manuel Verduzco. Verduzco, Mr. Verduzco. Danny and the city of El Paso will have that. It's public record when you do those. So he's not going to reach out to you. You need to reach out to him, okay? So. Just got to tell you that. Right. So once the building permit is approved, it does uh, become public records. You can go through our, through our open records request. Mm -hmm. uh, you can access it through our website or at 811 Texas, the one-stop shop, fill out an application, and those documents will be provided to you. Okay. And this is when they start doing construction, which again, I assume they have to contact the, us mm -hmm. uh, because we're building in firewall in, in the joining wall, right? If there is a common wall between your building and the property owner of, of, the, of the property we're discussing. Well, and that's why we're here because, yeah. again, if you're going to enhance, you have to enhance the joining wall right, in their side. More than likely, if it doesn't have the required fire rating, then yes, it would, be have, it would need to be modified. But if it's a common wall between the two property owners, the adjacent property owner will be notified. And all costs is here is within the, the gentleman that's trying to do the enhancement, right? Can you repeat that? The cost yes. for doing all these uh, upgrades will be part of the gentleman, the owner of the other property, right? Uh, the, the cost is not something that we can get involved in. That that will be between the property owners. He's responsible for his proposed construction on his plan. So I, I would believe, I can't imagine that it would be Whatever he's proposing, I'm assuming would be proposed, he'd pro be proposing to pay for as well. I, I, I can tell you that the city will not make you okay. pay for part of the construction. Thank you. What about any damages then? If it's continuing? That more, more than likely it's going to uh, become a civil matter. Okay, but they already have Just remember that you have, uh, that you have city inspectors going to, right now you don't have any of that. So. I, I understand, ma'am, ma but we cannot discuss that at all here. Yeah, they don't give you any permission. Right. It's open, it's open. That's correct. They just hope that you have but if we don't approve this, then your under other recourse is to go to state district court. So you have two choices, and that's pretty much it. 
What, what this really does is give an avenue for this gentleman to bring the property up to current code, which is, sounds like is a better condition than it's in right now. Um, so this action will allow us to move forward so that building permits and inspections can process his plans and make sure everything's up to code with what will be containing four residential units. And don't, and don't just assume it's protecting you, it's protecting him as well because he's got a large investment he's gonna make. He, <laughs> it's gonna be to substantial. Yeah. With that, does anybody have any more questions? I would entertain a motion. Martha Aguayo, I make a motion that we approve the city's uh, the staff recommendations with meeting to meet the uh, adjustments that are requested. Uh, Janet Fortune, I second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all so much. What item am I on? Okay. We will move on to item six, which is PZBA 24 0028. That's Good one afternoon again. Supplemental <laughs> report. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Mirna Aguilar with Planning and Inspections. Item number six in the agenda is a request for special exception F, a request to permit a proposed addition into the required 10 foot side street yard setback at the property located at 12357 Tierra Limpia. This image shows the subject property. Right here we see the property being in an R5 residential zone and the existing and surrounding zoning for the property. This image is the site plan portraying the layout of the existing property where the requested area of encroachment is shown in red. The applicant is proposing the construction of a 24 by 5 structure for a total of 120 square feet encroaching into the side street yard setback. This shows the front of the property as in its existing condition. This picture shows the exist, existing side street yard with proposed encroachment highlighted in red. This picture was taken a little closer uh, on the proposed encroachment also shown in red. To qualify for this exception, um, the proposed modification must not exceed 50% of the required setback, and the minimum front and rear yard setbacks are not to be reduced. Notices were mailed to property owners within 300 um, square feet in, on April 5th, 2024. Four, the planning division has not received any communications in support or opposition to the request. Staff does recommend approval with condition of the exception request. The condition is as follows. The, the permit for the fence along the side street are, um, shall be obtained prior to the issuance of the building permit for a new addition. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, Jesus Quintanilla with the City Attorney's Office. I just wanted to note for the record that Mr. Rey Adalto stepped out in the middle of that presentation. We still have seven members needed for quorum. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions for staff? Thank you. Do we have a representative of the applicant here? Jeronimo Cortez, Drassman. Thank you. Do we have any, uh, any questions for Mr. Cortez? What is the intention for the expansion? Uh, it's a utility room because it's since it's a two-story house, you know, the lady wants to do a utility and a storage. Is this a single-family home or a multi-family? It's a single-family. Any other questions? No, ma'am. Do we have anyone present uh, online or in person here to speak in favor of or against this item? Star six to unmute yourself. 
Any public comment? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Alexis, what is my motion to approve? With the staff conditions. Sorry. With the staff recommendations, okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve with staff recommendations. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That takes us to item number seven, uh, PZBA 24-00031. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the board. Juan Naranjo with planning and inspections again. Item number seven on the agenda is a request for a special section B for the property located at 10221 Bridge Street. The applicant is seeking an exception B to allow the encroachment of the proposed carport into the required five foot set side yard setback in R4 residential zone district. Here is an aerial view of the property highlighted in yellow. The property is located west of Dyer Street and north of Goodwill being Transmountain Trans Drive. The zoning district for the property is R4 residential. Here is the site plan with the layout of the existing property. The applicant is requesting a special section B to allow the construction of the carport, which is extend four feet into the required five foot side yard setback for the total encroachment of 180 square feet. Here we can see a front view of the property along Bridge Street. Here we have the front view of the proposed addition with the four feet encroachment into the five foot side yard setback as shown in red. Sorry. Area photographs indicate that there are two other properties within the block directly across and abutting the street that also contain a structure located in the side yard that encroach into their respective side yard setbacks located at 10208 and 10224 Bridge Street. This is an, area, an aerial view of the property located at 10224 Bridge Street. This is an aerial view of the property located at 10208 Bridge Street, showing red that both property uh, have a encroachment into the five feet required, required side yard setbacks. Notice were made to property only within 300 feet on April 5, 2024. The planning division has not received any communication in support or opposition to the request. Staff recommends approval with condition of the section request. The conditions are as follows. That the accessory structure located at the rear, rear yard shall be removed from five foot utility easement area, and that the gutter and down spot shall be placed on the side of the structure to retain the water within the property. Thank you, this concludes my presentation. Thank you, do we have any questions for staff? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, do we have anyone here to represent the applicant? Homeowner representative? Jeronimo Cortez. Dressman. Victor Lovano, Lone Star Builders and Roofing. Graciela Gonzalez, I'm the owner. Thank you all. Do we have any questions for the applicant? No, ma'am. Okay. Is there anyone here online, in person, mostly online, um, that wishes to make any public comments in favor or against? Star six to unmute yourself. Any public comment? Okay. Hearing none, I will consider a motion. Martha Aguayo, I make a motion we approve with the conditions uh, recommended by the staff. 
Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion passes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that takes us to item eight, approval of the minutes from March 18th, 2024. Hopefully you all have had a chance to take a look at them. I'll entertain a motion if you've read them. <laughs> or even if you haven't. I make, Martha Aguayo, I make a motion when we approve the minutes. Thank you. Alex Alvarez, I'll second the motion. Thank you, I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the ayes have it, the motion passes. Anything else for the good of the group? With that, I'll declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you all so much.